Welcome guys to this another video. In today's video, we want to pick up from where we left off in our last video. So we want to complete from question 31 through to 40. And remember, we're working on the stage 2. Set 1, City and Gills Math Pass Paper, alright? Now before we get into this video guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done it. And please give this video a thumbs up as well as all the other videos that you watch on this channel as that is a free way to support the Chris Maths Academy. Now let's get right into it. So now we're looking at question 31. In a sale, there is a 10% discount. What is the discount on a dress that costs $150? Now the discount simply means the amount that will be taken off the cost of the dress right here in this particular question, all right? Now, the discount is 10% of the cost of the dress. And the cost of the dress is what? $150. Alright, so once we find 10% of the $150, then that will give us our discount right here. Alright, now 10% is the same thing as 10 out of 100 of that operation is multiplication the one hundred and fifty dollars all right so we have ten out of a hundred times one hundred and fifty one hundred and fifty is the same thing as saying one hundred and fifty divided by one i like to set it up like this don't know why just a habit now we can do some reducing here all right so ten into itself goes one time ten into a hundred goes ten times ten into itself again goes one times 10 into 150 goes 15 times. So 1 times 15, that's 15, all right? So therefore, our discount would actually be $15, which is option B right here. Now we're looking at question 32. The cost of a holiday is $550. The deposit for a holiday is 20%. The deposit is, all right. So if we know that the deposit is 20%, of the cost of the holiday then we simply need to find here 20 percent of the cost of the holiday which is what which is 550 dollars all right so 20 percent again that's anything that is a percentage it's out of 100 so 20 percent is the same thing as 20 out of 100 of again means multiplication so that's 20 out of 100 times the cost of the holiday which is five hundred and fifty dollars now five hundred and fifty is the same thing as five hundred and fifty divided by one now we can do some simplifying here so twenty into itself goes one times twenty into a hundred goes five times five into itself goes one times five into five hundred and fifty goes one hundred and ten times one times one hundred and ten is one hundred and ten so that's $110 right there, which is option B. All right, now looking at question 33, what is one fifth expressed as a percentage? All right, now it's easy, very easy to convert a fraction to percentage. All you need to do is to multiply that fraction by 100 and you can obtain the value as a percentage. All right, so one fifth, so that's one divided by five times 100 as percentage is just a ratio out of 100 100 is the same thing as 100 divided by 1 we can do some reducing here or we can multiply numerator by numerator denominator by denominator and then divide at the end which is what i'll do in this case all right so 1 times 100 is 100 5 times 1 that's 5 now 5 into 100 goes 20 times so therefore our answer here would actually be 20 percent all right so one fifth as a percentage is 20 percent which is option c right there now looking at question 34 what is three quarter as a decimal fraction all right so they want us to convert this fraction right here to a decimal 
So they want us to convert this fraction right here to a decimal, which is quite easy actually, all right? Now, three quarter is the same thing as saying three divided by four, all right? Now, three divided by four can also be written like this, where we say how many times can four go into three, all right? And this is the method that we're going to use to solve um, this particular question. Now, can four go into three? No, four going to three is zero times, all right? Now, what I'm going to do here is to add a decimal point here, which then allows me to add a zero here. So can four go into 30? Of course, four into 30 goes seven times. Seven times four, that's 28. Now, 28 from 30 will leave us with a two right here. Can four go into two? No, but because we're already behind the decimal point, it allows us to add a zero, making this 20. Now, 4 into 20 goes 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20 times, all right? 20 from 20 is 0, all right? So, there we go. Our answer right here would actually be 0 0.75, which is option D right here. All right, now we're looking at question 35. What is 1 12th as a decimal fraction, all right? So this is pretty much similar to the, the previous question. So I want to find what is 1 divided by 12, which can also be written like this. 1 divided by 12 as a decimal, all right? Now, 1 divided by 12 is the same thing as saying how many times can 12 go into 1? All right, and we can check that out right here. Now, 12 into 1 goes 0 times. All right, now again, I'm going to add a decimal point here, which then allows me to add a 0 here. Now, 12 into 10 goes 0 times. All right, now because I'm already behind the decimal point, I can add a 0, making this a 100. Now, 12 into 100 goes 8 times. 8 times 12 is 96. All right, 96 from 100 will leave me with 4. And because I'm behind the decimal point, I can add a 0 here. Now, 12 into 40 goes what? Goes 3 times. 3 times 12 is 36. 36 from 40 will leave me with 4. And because we're behind the decimal place, we can add 0 again. Now, 12 into 40 goes 3 times. And as you can see here, this will never end, all right? It will continue like this. So 3 times 12 is 36. 36 from 40 will leave us with 4. And I'm going to stop here, all right? With 4 decimal, please. So therefore, our answer here would actually be option A, which is 0 0.0833, all right? All right, now looking at question 36. The number of people attending a baseball game was 24,658. Round this number to the nearest thousand, all right? Fair enough. Now, if we want to round this number, which is 24,658, if we want to round off this number to the nearest thousand, we need to look at the place value that comes before a thousand, which is 100, all right? Now, the digit that is in the hundreds place, if that digit is four or less, then we are going to have to keep the digit that is in the thousand place. Now, if this digit is 5 or greater, then we are going to have to round the digit that is in the thousand place up by 1, all right? So, if it's 4 here, we're going to have to round it up to 5, all right? Now, let's see how this works. Now, when we look back at this, is this 4 or less? No, it's not. It actually falls underneath the bracket of being 5 or greater. So, we are going to have to round this 4 up by 1, all right? making this now 2, so we round this 4 up by 1, making it 5. Now, every digit that comes after this, we are going to replace it with a 0, so we replace the 6 with a 0, the 5 with a 0, the 8 with a 0. So, therefore, our answer here would actually be 25,000, all right, which is option E right here, all right. All right, now looking at question 37. The distance between two towns is 167 kilometers. Round 167 to the nearest 10. All right, fair enough. So we want to round off 167 to the nearest 10s. Now, 
before we can do that we first need to pay attention to the digit that is actually in the ones place that's the place value before we get to the tens place now if this digit is five or greater then we need to round up the digit that is in the tens place by one if it's four or less then we need to keep the digit that is in the tens place all right now when we look at this seven right here it falls under the category of being five or greater because seven is greater than five so we need to round up this six here by one all right which will bring it up to seven now every digit that comes after we are going to replace that digit with a zero we only have one digit after that which is the seven and we're going to replace it with a zero all right so therefore if we round off 167 to the nearest 10 then we'll end up with 170 which is option c right here now we're looking at question 38 so 8.46 written correct to one decimal place is all right fair enough so i want to write this thing as one decimal place now we have 8.46 now if we want to round this off to one decimal place we need to look at the digit that is in the second decimal place all right now let's look at this digit right here now this is very similar to when we were rounding off the numbers now if this digit is five or greater we're going to round up the digit that is in the first decimal place right here up by one if it is four or less then we are going to keep the digit as is in the first decimal place right here now the six here fall underneath the category of being five or greater so we're going to round up the four here by one making this 8.5 all right and we only need one decimal place so we'll stop right here so that's 8.5 which is option c right here now we're looking at question 39 2.3672 2 written correct to two decimal places is now First thing first, we know that A and D are not our answers, all right? Because they want the answer to be written to two decimal places, all right? So we can eliminate those. Now, we're looking at this number here, which is 2.3672, all right? Now, we want to round this off to two decimal places. So we want to look at the number that is in the third decimal place right here, which is this 7. And again, if this number is 5 or greater, we're going to round up the digit that is in the second decimal place up by 1. If it's 4 or less, then we are going to keep the digit that is in the second decimal place right here. Now, 7 fall underneath the category of being 5 or greater because 7 is greater than 5. So we're going to round up this 6 here by 1. So we're going to make this 2.3 seven and we'll stop right here because i want the answer to be written correct to two decimal places all right which is option c right here now we're looking at question 40. on a diagram two centimeters represents 20 meters a line drawn eight centimeters represents all right fair enough so what they're saying here on a diagram they use two centimeters to represent an actual distance of 20 meters now if on the diagram we have a line that is drawn and is represented by 8 centimeters, what is the actual measurement of that line? All right. Now, if 2 centimeters is actually 20 meters, all right. So if 2 centimeters on the diagram is actually 20 meters, then we can say 4 centimeters is actually 40 meters. Do you see the correlation right here? So if we double the measurement on the map, then we expect that the actual measurement should also double as well. Now look at it now. If we have 8 centimeters on the map, then we expect that the actual measurement is what? There you go. 80 meters. All right. So as you can see here, 1 centimeter would actually be equal to... 10 meters all right so that's the that's the pattern right there for every one centimeters you have 10 meters all right and 8 times 10 is 80 all right so hopefully that makes a lot of sense our answer here would actually be option d all right 
now thank you guys for watching this video to the end if you haven't yet done it please subscribe to the channel and hit that like button as it's a free way to support the chris max academy as we continue to strive to make awesome things happen i'm looking forward to see you guys in our next video until then blessings and peace